Hi, I'm Julie Haymaker, and in this video I'm going to show you how to use colored pencils on shrink plastic beads, my shrink it's beads. This is a little set that um, of pre-cuts that's just a really basic nice set that I sell on my website. And they also, this little set comes in your mold kits if you've bought any of the molds. So with colored pencils we color on the frosted side. Most shrink plastic that you're going to use is going to have a shiny side and it's going to have a frosted side. The Shrinkets brand shrink plastic that I sell on my website and on my Etsy site at Julie Haymaker dot com you can visit the Shrinkit shops, that's the first page that comes up, and I sell a jewelry grade shrink plastic. The Shrinkit brands is jewelry grade. Now why do I call it that is because of the ratio that it shrinks down. It keeps your colors nice and clear, and it's got a very nice, uh, finely sanded surface so you can get great details. So this is the bead that I like to use in this in the fluted spacer bead mold, but it can be used in everything. So I'm going to start with showing you um, just doing patterns on it, and I'm going to be showing you shading techniques. This is shading. When I shade, notice. Um, how I softly twirl my hand as I overlap. That way I'm avoiding these types of lines, you know, that can happen. If I have this little, develop this little twir uh, twirling technique, then look how I can overlap. And I'm giving it a very light touch. This is a heavy, this would be a heavy touch. This is a very light touch. So I build it up like so, and shading is really nice for creating ombre effects. Notice how I can go over the color of that, connecting them. And I can also smear this. The colored pencils that I like to use are the Prisma brand colors. Um, but there's a lot of nice colored pencils out there, and it really doesn't matter what you use. But the Prisma colors have a nice um, oily, um, great kind of a. They're more of an oily pencil, and so they smear well. So if I go over this, see the nice little ombre effect that I'm creating with that. So here, let's go back to our spacer bead, and I'm going to now um, show some contour lines. That's just nice, heavy lines. The wider the lines, the duller the pencil. Okay, so if you want really wide lines, burnish your pencil off. I'm going to go back over these so that now I'm going to use the shading techniques in between here. Very rarely do I build up heavy overall color on a shrink plastic bead. I might go back over it like this. Be it's simp no notice I went over it in two different directions so that um, I'm assured that I've got a nice finished um, surface without the lines showing. If I was to use a heavy hand, really heavy buildup of my colored pencil, my bead's going to shrink down and be really dark. Shrink plastic shrinks about 50%. So if your colors if this was used all over, that's going to come out a very dark orange. So I tend to use my dark pressure, heavy lines, contour lines that are all created with a tighter pressure, either with a very sharp 
pencil for sharp details or a burnished off pencil for wide de details, I tend to use those for the contour line drawings. I'm gonna give us a clean piece of paper here. Um, now I'm gonna go in with more shading in, in between these boxes. And even though I'm doing my little twirling technique, notice that I go back over it in a different direction. When I'm doing a little box check pattern like this, just to ensure. that I don't have odd pencil lines on this. Now I'm gonna come in here and I'm going to smear. Now I'm smearing, so I'm smearing really hard. Really hard. My finger, oh, just really hard. My finger's feeling very warm. I'm blending those colors. Now you don't always have to do this. I'm just showing you on this. We'll get a softer look. Now, let's pick out a, a, a border color on this. I'm going to use black on it, and I always burnish when I do a border because I want a nice, wide look. And that just happens to be, I've got some little funk on that. That just happens to be the look I like. So notice how the angle that I'm burnishing the pencil. And you don't need to have exact precision. I see a little area that needs to be filled in here. Um, you don't have to be perfect in drawing on your beads because when they shrink down the whole design tightens up and you know your 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 drawing becomes more precise and more perfected but my my technique my style who I am as a creator tends to be um, whimsical and I can't encourage that enough. Be true to who you are. Don't try to be something you're not. Don't. It's very easy to go to a site like Pinterest and 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 also go on Instagram and see all these techniques, you know, and I want to do that. I want to be that. You can be influenced, but make it you. Be true to you. Don't fight who you are. So now I'm coming in with nice like at more of a heavy hand. And even though I didn't sharpen my pencil, I'm using the tip of it where it still is sharp. Notice I'm not making, that would make big holes. I'm coming here and just using a little tiny tip of it, or I could have sharpened it, but this is just a little trick because this is showing you how to use colored pencils on straight plastic. So I can just twirl it around and find a sharp edge that's on it. And there we go. That's our fluted spacer bead technique. Okay, now I'm gonna flip this over, get clean, and then I'm going to show you, we'll be using, this is the star mold, and this is a five petal. Do I have one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. So five petals look really nice in the star mold. So once again, I'm going to be showing you some shading technique. Remember, our shading is a light touch. And I'm just going to shade the center of the bead here, the center of the petals, for a real delicate look. And then I'll do some ombre looks on this. So 
So just shading. And I'm going over it with even a lighter, just a very light touch, just twirling and shading, twirling and shading. You know, if you just color every day, even if you got yourself a coloring book, an adult coloring book, and you just practice the shading, um, you know, it's a, it's a learned technique. But that would be very helpful too. Do it every day or try to do it once a week and you'll get better. So I'm coming over here and doing shading up to here. Just in the central, central area. Not going all the way around. I'm just keeping it right in this area right here. So it has kind of an aura just right in this area here, just a nice aura. Now, I also, on my website, offer a class called Shrinkets and the Color Wheel. And once again, you can access that on my website. I'm gonna smear here. And that helps you learn color. There seems to be a little odd mark on my shrink plastic that's not taking color, and I'm not worried about that. I'm just going to let that be part of it. So here again, I rubbed, and I've got this nice. I'm going to add a little more because I see I'm pretty intense there on this side. So shrink it's in the color wheel will teach you about color. So that's a little cutie pie. Let's come in here with some green. My pencil's dull, so I'm going to sharpen it. And I've got this nice little sharpener that I bought on Amazon. So I'm coming in here with little dots all over the tip of the petal. And these are this is with a nice, sharp pencil and my pressure. It's so much stronger than it is when I'm shading. And all the different pet flower shapes can be used in all the different molds. You'll probably find that you have your favorite shapes for certain molds. Like I said, the first one I did is nice for the fluted spacer bead mold. And this one's for the star mold. Let's then come in with some contour. Um, contour line can be just a straight line or it can be what I call thick and thin. So I'm going really light pressure down to heavier pressure and it's like a calligraphy line. And always my pencil will break because I'm applying the pressure. But notice how this can go light to thin. So it's, um, you know, a calligraphy line. We're gonna come in here and we're gonna use it this way. Light out and then heavy and light in. Light touch, heavy, and then gradating to light. And this takes practice too. Light and then heavy at the tip. Oh, I kept too heavy there. Yikes. Didn't I forgot to lift up. Not gonna also heavy. I was talking and not paying attention. So I'm gonna come in here then with a nice orange, heavy, heavy heavy and there we go nice contour line for the star mold now let's talk about the bezel mold the bezel mold is a mold that that doesn't rock it has this little flat area so I'm going to color on this um, bead for it. it the bezel mold many Almost uh, all of them work great in the bezel mold. All of the shapes work great in the bezel mold. So let's do more ombre, but we're going to come out here at the tips. And notice how when I go over that with the shading, 
how it hits the edges and creates a dark effect. because the pigment is gathering on the rough edges of the cut. And I'm just applying more pigment, just going over it longer down there at those tips. Now I said we're gonna do ombre, so I'm coming in here with this light blue whirling and shading overlapping twirling and shading overlapping twirling overlapping repeating on all my petals and smearing. And coming in, I'm going to sharpen. And then I'm going to come in with some dash lines. Nice, light touch. I mean, if I press hard, see what happens. That's, you know, when, when you do a contour line like I showed you, when you have to press hard, it will break. So sometimes maybe you, what you, I recommend, let's sharpen it and let's take some of that tip off already. And then we can twirl our pencil a little to get a tip on it that won't break so easily when we do contour line. These little dashed lines are always fun when they're shrunk down. Now let's go black back to the black. And I'm going to, I'm going to make sure that my tip doesn't break every time I hit it. I'm going to put these little dots out to the edge. Notice a little tiny, I do a little twirling with my finger. Notice this, can you kind of see the tiny technique of my hand, how it just doesn't try to do that, it twirls. If I just, you know, go back and forth on a dot, you know, it doesn't make the nice little round dot. If I do a little tiny twirl, just like my little shading technique. And I also, on this one, I did ombre and light blue, but I still am very transparent and allowing some of the color to come through. As with this one, I mean, some of the transparent bead to come through, where this was overall colored, but it was just shaded. So still, light will come through. That's the point. If you put too heavy a pigment down, you don't, you get an opaque bead. And, and if you want an opaque bead, that's how you get it. Heavy color. So there we are, just a really simple little bead. And now let's go to our classic dome, basic dome bead. And I'm just gonna do a little four petal for this. And I'm probably gonna show again contour line. But I think I'm gonna do also a plaid look. So a plaid look. A little, we'll see if we can get contour line on there. We're gonna do a plaid. I'm burnishing. So I'm coming here. I'm going to try to get as many techniques on each bead, an example for each bead for you. Um, even when I'm going back and forth, notice I have that little twirly thing going on. 
can make this a really um, unusual colors. More of a sophisticated palette, but still in my whimsical style. So where this is fun is when your colors overlap to create a plaid look. Right in here. And you can um, enhance that. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to sharpen. And I'm going to come in here with little squares. With a sharp little edge. And like I said, if you get your pencil really sharp and you're always breaking your tip off, fine. Just twirl it a little bit on your paper to get the tip back, but it's not at such a sharp little tip. It's more like, instead of a sharp tip exactly like this, it's a sharp little rounded tip, but it's still sharp on the end. So I've come over here, and then I'm just going to fill in. I outlined them heavier, and I'm using a lighter touch to fill in. So heavy, and then I'm just kind of shading inside. There. Now, let's go over, sharpen. And... I'm coming in here with fun lines in between. This is just a nice, crisp, sharp line. Nice, crisp. And the same, let's sharpen again. Nice, crisp, sharp line. Light touch. Light, very, well, that light touch. And let's come in here with, I had to take some of the break off of that. There's my tip. Circles around these edges. Whoops, it broke again. That will happen. It's kind of when you're sewing and you're hand sewing and thread gets tangled up. It's the nature of the beast. So we're going to come in here. Nice lines. So I was able to get my contour lines in here, but not my calligraphy contour lines. And when I called those the calligraphy one, it's the thick and thin. So there we have something that we're going to use in our bezel mold. And now one last thing that I want to show you um, is your your beads often, you'll when you get a kit from me, you get um, leaf beads. And leaf beads are fun. They're fun to use to design with, and they're fun to create. And when you watch the video about how to shrink and use the molds, um, I, I will show you how to form these, and I also have it on my website how to form them. So let's come in here. I'm burnishing off an edge and coming in. You can put your outline on your edge before or after. Here I'm doing it before. Here I did it after. Nice burnished line and people ask, do you come up to the edge? Yes, right up to the edge. And beyond. I mean, my pencils overlapped a little bit. So there we go. We're going to ombre on this. Shade, I'm heavy, really overlapping, and going out and not overlapping to absolutely nothing. That's all in my touch. Just going over it and over it, and then I lighten up my hand until it just goes right off like a plane taking off. Light. And then, like a plane taking off, my pencil's very barely touching the surface. And then I'm just going back over. When I shade, I don't just get heavier 
I just go over it. Over it. To build up color. And then off like an airplane. So let's put contour lines in this. We're going to do, and I'm going to break my tip off a little bit and twirl it. And then I'm going to do some things like this on it. Heavy. And I'll come in with some fun little dots. Very, very light touch. Okay, those are my um, techniques with um, colored pencil. Thanks for watching.